at this point we'll open it up to our, uh, we'll welcome our winners, Tiranish Dababa. Galen Rupp, official times for Tiranish, 2.18.31, for Galen, 2.09.20. And here is Sabrina who's going to help us with translation also. Um, so let's start with Tiranish. If you could um, just explain that your thoughts from the outset, the pace was very fast. Um, it seemed that that would suit you. Is that accurate? You were very hopeful of having a, a fast pace from the outset. Um, uh, yes, I trained very well for this. After the World Championships, this was what I was preparing for. And I knew that if I maintained my own pace, I would be able to finish in 217. That's the kind of training that I'd done. So I worked on my own pace. I was running each kilometer about 315, 317, under 320. Thank you. Um, we'll ask Galen. Um, men's race was entirely different. It seemed it was kind of pedestrian early on. It got very fast, eased off again. But it seemed that you made a decision at one point that you were going to throw down a couple of 430 miles and just decide it once and for all. Is that accurate to say? Yeah. I mean, coming in, um, you know, talking with my coaches, my plan was to be invisible for at least the first 20, 22 miles. Um, I think I made the mistake before, uh, especially in Boston, of getting a little too anxious and, and going a little too soon. Um, and it, I really was struggling at the end in, in, those, in that race. And so uh, here, you know, I think uh, it was real important for me to, to just sit back, relax. It was just about conserving energy. That was my mantra for the first 20, 22 miles. And so I just wanted to stay back. And, you know, when it was time to go, I wanted to make a real decisive move. and. Um, you know, it, it happened to come, you know, I think around 23, 24 miles. Um, and, uh, and that's when I went. And at that point, you have to be all in. You know, you can't, can't kind of think you're going to go or go and then back off. It's, I knew at that point I had to drive all the way to the finish line. And um, we had done so much in training to, to prepare me for this. So I felt so confident, you know, the longer the race went on. Um, we'd done so many 23, 25-mile runs where it was just... The ending was always really hard. You know, we might run the first 20 at moderate pace, but, but really focus on closing hard. And, and just two weeks, I think, before this race, we did the 25-mile run where same thing. First 20 were easy, and, uh, you know, I think I closed it around uh, 430 and 420 for my last two miles. So I, I knew I was ready coming in. And as an athlete, that's where you gain all your confidence from is your training. And so, uh, you know, my, my coaches, Alberto Salazar, everybody at Nike Oregon Project just did a great job. And I was real confident coming into this race and, and happy the way it played out. Okay, questions? Okay, yes. For Galen, can you discuss just what this day is like for American running and, and can you talk about Jordan as well? I mean, it's tremendous. Um, for me, it's just fun to be a part of. You know, I think that it, it's awesome to see Americans competing, you know, and. Uh, just on the international level, being competitive. I think you've seen that with Matthew, obviously, run, winning the 1500 meter gold in the Olympics. Um, you know, you got Evan, who's run really well. It's been a lot of people, and that's what it, it's going to take. You know, it can't just be one person running well. And um, so I'm just thrilled to be a part of it. You know, it's, it's real fun to, to see Americans doing well again and being competitive in these races. And hopefully, we can inspire a future generation to, to pick up distance running and, and you know, they'll have that belief growing up that, that they can be there. And, um, you know, same with Jordan, too. She's just done a great job of continuing to, to work her butt off in training. You know, she's always stayed so positive. Um, that's something that I've always really, you know, kind of admired about her is throughout her career, she has just been so positive and always looking forward, always goes back to work. And um, I'm real happy, you know, that I think that, that she's found her event in the marathon. And uh, obviously has had two great races so far in Boston and, and now here in Chicago, so uh, it's going to be exciting to watch her going forward. David. Galen, you've run four marathons without pacemaking. 
Uh, do you look forward to getting into a race where you can't settle in behind uh, fast paces and test yourself against the clock? Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, I'd love to get, obviously, I think I have a lot more running in my legs. You know, I think that I've always been very good at paced races, you know, going back to the track. And so, uh, you know, I think that that would definitely be something that, that I'd love to do, you know, moving forward. But great thing about track and field and, and distance running, marathoning, is, is that the heart of it is really about competition. It's competition in its purest form. And that's something that I've always thrived on. And, and I love these competitive races, you know. it's. I think they're more entertaining to watch because you get a lot more variety of tactics. You know, you if it's paced hard and fast from the start, you know, you don't really get a lot of surges, things like that. And you know, it's just you go until you you're constantly redlining it, so you go until you can't go anymore. And uh, but I think that you know the time will come. Right now, I'm really just focused on continuing to to put myself in a good position. And you know, the more of these races, I gain so much experience in every single one of them. And so. Uh, you know, I think that I still have a lot of room to grow, and I'm just excited about the future. I love being a marathoner. Larry. Kalen, congratulations. You looked right through the entire race. Did you have a bad patch? Did you have any part of the race where you're kind of going, oh, boy? Yeah, I mean, I, I think you always try to hide that. So uh, I'll take that as a compliment that I, I hit it all right in this. But definitely had a few of them. You know, I just think that in the marathon, is, it, I really look up to Elliot Kipchoge. I love the fact that... When you listen to him talk and talk about the mind so much, I think that that, it really is true. You know, the marathon is so much of a mental battle. So much of it is about having control of your mind. And um, that's something that we really work on, you know, in training all the time, I think, is maintaining a calm mind. You know, everybody goes through those rough patches. It's, it's just, it happens to us all. And it's, it's how you deal with those and how you're able to stay positive, how you're able to relax and, and just having that. That power, you know, in your head is, is huge. It's something that I've really tried to work on in this build-up. And again, Alberto does a fantastic job of putting us in a lot of pretty darn uncomfortable situations in workouts. And so, you know, our workouts are brutal. And when it comes to racing time, we know we've been through it all. And I think having that behind you, again, confidence comes from training, um, both your body and your mind. And so, you know, that's something that when we toe the line, you know, I know I'm ready. I have a lot of confidence that I'm ready. I have a lot of confidence in the way that I've trained and, you know, I was able to show today. Were you surprised at the pacing of the race? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's one of the great things about races without pacers is that you never know what to expect. Um, I was a little surprised for sure that, that it went out slow. Um, you know, I, I thought that just with the quality of the field, there was a good chance that, uh, you know, it would go out at a very honest pace. Um, you got a guy like Abo, or Abo Karui, who obviously has won this thing before, showing that he's tremendous in tactical races. And so I, th I really thought that there would be somebody that would push it early. You know, some of the guys that have a lot faster PRs, a lot faster PRs than me, for that matter, um, just because, you know, they probably have a lot more confidence to go out that hard. I, I only know slower races, I guess, in the marathon in the beginning. So, I, you know, this was no different for me. Um, I knew that. When we started, it was just about relaxing. There was going to be a big move. And um, again, it was really about conserving energy until that move came. And then, um, you know, when it was time to go, you, you're just all in. Congratulations. You were very patient today. And then when you moved, you really moved hard. What told you, what in your mind told you that was the right time to strike? Um, you know, I, I really wanted to wait till at least 22 miles. Um, that was that was kind of a, a number that I had in mind. Um, but even later, if, it, if there was a big group, I was prepared to wait until even a mile to go. Um, because even at 22 miles, four miles is a long ways, and especially after you've already run 22, there's a lot that can happen in there. So, um, you know, but the important thing, I think, was just to, to be decisive. That was the big thing. Um, and uh, that's, that's what I tried to do, you know, it just kind of, happened naturally, I guess. I, I saw that I had a little bit of a gap, and he wasn't right on me, you know, when I started to move, and at that point, I told myself, you gotta go and really put the hurt on him and see how he responds, and, you know, I was fortunate enough to get a little bit of a gap. He's a tough runner, you know, I think that he's proven over and over again that he does really well in these types of races, and um, so I knew I was gonna have a battle on my hands, and, uh, you know, once I was able to get a gap at that point, there's no looking back. You got to go all the way to the finish and, and give it all you got. So I was just trying to keep driving all the way there. It looked like you kind of cracked a smile as you were coming up to the finish line. What was going through your head? And then it looked like you got emotional afterwards. 
Yeah, uh, it was, uh, well, obviously I was thrilled, you know, once you, you never want to let your guard down in a race. And so, you know, I kind of, once you hit that home straight, it was something where I knew I had it. And um, that's where the smile came from. And, you know, at the end, when I saw my family, my wife and my kids, they give so much for me to be able to do what I love. My, my wife is literally, she's given up her life to support me. And um, my kids too, you know, I, I work, work my butt off and I don't get to see them as much as, as I would like. And so it's a, it's a real emotional thing. You know, you put so much into this one race and uh, to see them at the finish line, to see them happy, you know, it just, it, it means the world to me. I have twins that are three, and then um, baby boy that is a, probably going to turn one in just over a week. So, uh, yeah. All right, Galen, you won a bunch of US titles, you've got two Olympic medals, now finally a major marathon win. Where does this accomplishment rank among what you've accomplished in your career? Uh, I don't know. It's, it's definitely up there for sure. You know, um, I feel like I, I've been fortunate to, to accomplish what I have, but. You know, it's always been, been hard, you know, finishing second, finishing third a lot in some of these major championships. I really felt like I was right there. You know, you just have to be persistent and, you know, keep believing in yourself, keep tweaking your training to, to make those little adjustments. You know, it's that last little bit sometimes that, that takes the most. And so, uh, you know, I just keep working and I always believed that, that I could get there. Um, and so, you know, to actually be able to win is, is something that's really special to me for sure. Chicago, is that true? Yeah, my, my dad grew up here in, uh, in Maywood and Oak Park, so uh, I have so many fond memories of, of coming here as a kid. I love this city, you know, that was really, most of the only vacations that I took were, were coming to Chicago as a kid, you know, to visit my family, um, go to a Cubs game, uh, and I, I just love it here. So I was really, really happy when it worked out that I was able to run here um, just because of that. And, you know, I have a lot of family here still, and um, I haven't been able to see all of them yet, but uh, I know we're going to have a lot of celebrating tonight for sure. Thank you. The turn is, uh, some athletes really struggle to make the transition from the track to the marathon, but it's gone really smoothly for you. Why do you think that is? Mm -hmm. Yes, we are known for long distances and also middle distances, and we train very hard for that. If you train very well, I think you can make the transition. Um, if you run fast on the track, this is actually, I think, perhaps easier than 5,000 meters and 10,000 meters. Larry. Uh, Tiernish, congratulations. Uh, Bridget Koskai was with you for a very long time and it looked like you were running very, very hard to try to break her. Can you tell us how you felt during the middle part of the race? I was a yellow, real sour lemon good mallet, oil a muslek, Namadalam, Yerasi Fatasat, Lamadot, Yasar of Training, Asrasmut, Kasrasavat, Mias Rotaino, Dukam Nasaum, Mutai, Kasalasa, Amus Kilometer, no, so Lam Rotana, Wayne Lamula Kasoga, Mafuka Karmijamro, Bazasatia. I actually wasn't running against anyone, but I was really just running to improve my own personal best. The training that I had done should have allowed me to run to 18 or even 217. Um, so generally, it's really after 35K that you would start to think about trying to drop others. And at that point, no one was with me. I was just chasing my own personal best and trying to use the training that I had used to run 217 or 218. Yeah, you mentioned your wife there. I just wondering if you could spend a bit on her contributions towards the success. Uh, I 
I mean, I don't, know, I don't know how else to put it. That she she literally has given up everything to help me. You know, she does such a tremendous job with our three children. She's the most amazing mom I've ever seen. Um, and you know, for me, it's just she she makes sure that I don't have anything to worry about except eating, sleeping, and training. And um, you know, as a distance runner, so much of it is about being disciplined, live a very basic life. It's just hard day after hard day of training and, and letting your body recover. And you know, she really does everything for me. And um, you know, I, I really couldn't have done it without her. She's just been such a blessing, you know, ever since she came into my life. And um, and I just I love her so much. And uh, I, I just couldn't be more thankful to have such an amazing wife. Not much. I mean, just that we love each other. You know, she's she says she's so proud of me, and I thank her obviously for for everything that she does. But really, you know, it's a it's just a special moment. You know, there's not really you don't need to say a lot of words with the connection that we have. And um, you know, the one thing we did say though, they're looking forward to having some fun because <laughs> um, I've been on you know such lockdown as far as being able to do anything. And you know, we're we're gonna stick around the city for a little bit and, and have some fun with our kids. Okay. They're pumped to see dinosaur bones. That's what they keep talking about. So we're going to go to the Field Museum and, and do that one of these days. But uh, it's just, it, it's going to be fun. And I'm looking forward to having some downtime where I can just relax and, and be with them and just do some things I'm not able to do when I'm in full training mode. Kaylin, right. when you made your move, it was like surgery. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, what are you telling yourself when you're running a 431 mile and a 430 mile? Um, I was praying. I really wasn't looking at the clock at all. You know, I just, um, it's more of a feel thing at that point that you have to kind of ration out your energy, but you want to keep the pressure on. And um, I was really just praying those last two miles. That's all I was doing was, you know, saying my Hail Marys, Our Fathers, Glory of Peace, um, pray the Rosary. So that's something I, I learned from Alberto. Um, you know, one of his races, he told me, he probably doesn't like this story, but, uh, you know, that's. That's what he said he did in the Comrades Marathon, you know, last little bit. And, um, that's something that I've, I've always tried to do in marathons, too. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just such a, it keeps my mind at ease and um, it kind of takes your mind off the pain. And so that, that's really what I was doing the last couple of miles, was just praying, trying to stay relaxed, you know, and just giving glory to God. Sure. Kayla, before you made your move when you turned out in Michigan, really from 30K on, particularly Apple and, and Stephen Sambu at that time, they were ramping up the pace, sometimes even, but particularly, let's say, at 35K, there was a really hard surge. At one point, I mean, on one hand, you wanted to be patient, but how did you cover those moves and stay patient at the same time? I mean, really just wanted to stay behind everybody and, and just draft and relax, you know? I, I kind of joked around, it's like, they don't call it the Windy City for nothing. and. Um, so that was a big thing for me, was, was just drafting and, and staying behind. And again, there was no need to be in front unless I was going to start pushing. And so there were a few times I was a little anxious, but I really just tried to stay behind and, and concentrate on relaxing as much as possible. And um, you know, I definitely felt those surges. Uh, they were definitely hard. Um, but really, it's about just staying within yourself and, and just gearing up for that move you're going to make. And, you know, I felt pretty good for, for most of the race, um, and I think, again, it's just my training prepared me so well for this that um, I really was just, in my mind, everything was saving up for that big move that I was going to make, or a big move that someone else was going to make. So, obviously, he was the lot covering that, but really, it was just about saving energy so I had enough to go when I would, when I did. So. <laughs> Congratulations to Ranesh, you've arrived at your first marathon win. You've done everything over 10,000 meters and 5,000 meters. What are your goals from here on out? Is it the world record? Is it world championships? Is it Olympic gold? ማለት ያ ብዙ ውድድሮችን አሸንፈልኩ ለኔ ትልቁ ነገር ዛሬሽ እዚህ ማሸነፈ ነው ለምን የመጀመሪያ ላይ ነው ሳሸንፍ ሶስተኛ ማራቶን ነው እንደላይ በጣም ፈጣን ሰዓት ላይ ሮጥኩት እግል ለማሸነፍ አልቻልኩም በጣም ፈጣን ሰዓት አትሌት ነበሩና ይሄ ይሄን ውድድር በማሸነፍ በጣም ደስ ብሎኛል ካሁን በኋላ ወደ ትራካ ለመለሰ ለማራቶን ነው ምረጣው 
እግዚአብሔር ከፈቀደ የራሴ ስፈጣ ሰዓት እና ያለም ሪከርድ ያቀላል አይደለ ግን ሞክራለሁ በፒስ ሜከር Yes it's true I've won many races um but the big thing for me here is to win because this is my first marathon win it's my third marathon but the first one that I've won in London I ran a very fast time but I was not able to win so I'm very happy to win here I'm not going to be going back to the track I'm just going to be running marathons after this and god willing I hope to lower my personal best and also I hope to tackle the world record with pacemakers Okay we have one more question so Real and you, you've been really successful in your first four marathons, um, but you know, the, the times just haven't, they haven't come for you yet just because of the race situation. I'm curious if you think that you're ready to run 204, 203, and some of the times that the best marathoners in the world are running right now. I never like to put times on, you know, what I think I can do. You know, I think that whether you believe it or not, it still puts limits on things. And um, for me, running is always mostly, first and foremost, been about competition. And um, I feel like fast times are going to come. You know, I, I firmly believe that I have a lot of running in my legs still, and um, you know, just I'm running against some pretty good people that run pretty fast. And so, you know, I know that in the right circumstances, you know, with, with good weather, good pace, and good course, everything, I do believe that I can run a lot faster than I did here. But man, I'm just going to keep my head down, keep working hard, and um, you know, I'm definitely going to enjoy this one for for a while. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, you can't worry so much about time, I think. It's, it's more important about competing, and times will come. That's something that I've learned over the years, is that it'll come. You can't force it. Um, you can't force the conditions. You can't do all that, and you know, it'll happen when it happens. But right now, I'm really, all my focus was just getting on here, um, getting ready for Chicago, competing here, and uh, just real happy to get the win. Okay, I'm afraid that's all we have time for with our winners this year. Okay, I'm Rob. Congratulations to Anish Dababa. If you would like to take photographs, please come up now. This is your opportunity for a quick photo op.